Just how bad things are, are things right now, doctor, in New York State and elsewhere? What kind of shortages could we face? Unfortunately, the anti-vaccine movement has really taken hold amongst healthcare workers, especially nurses. And what you're going to see is hospitals really worrying about how they're going to continue operations. I, I think in the long run, it's better to get these people out of healthcare if they're not going to be uh, accepting of data uh, regarding this vaccine, that these are people you probably don't want working for you. But I think it's in the short run, it's going to be difficult because there are going to be staff shortages and it's going to be something that has to, to it's going to be very difficult for some of these, these places to cope. I know in, in my hometown outside of Pittsburgh that they're having that same issue. That's why they're reticent to mandate the vaccine because they think they won't be able to operate a hospital without uh, without the unvaccinated working there. And it's it's really, I think, a disgusting state of affairs that we've got healthcare workers who don't want to get vaccinated, and and then they also hold their hospital sort of hostage because of that. And and I think it, it really speaks to the lack of scientific literacy. If you look at physicians, 96% plus are vaccinated. It's not the physicians that aren't getting vaccinated. It's other care work. I think we have to really put the pressure on, but it's it's difficult if you're a hospital administrator to think how you're going to be able to cope, especially if you've got a lot of COVID patients, if you've got a lot of other things going on there. It, it's difficult, but if you think about workplace resiliency, a vaccinated workforce, all, all your nurses being vaccinated is going to minimize the disruptions COVID-19 has on your workforce. So to, to me, this is a, a no-brainer, and it's unfortunate it's come to this, but I don't really know what the solution is going to be, but I think there's going to be a lot of short-term pain. I know there's not one single answer for this question, doctor, but I'll ask it off you. What is holding them back? We've spent the last year talking about outreach. Let's talk about outreach within the healthcare community. What's holding them back? It's, it's not a one-size-fits-all type of answer. I think each nurse or each healthcare worker who's not vaccinated has their own reason that's in their mind. Most of these are all going to be kind of myths that they've absorbed. And I think it's important to remember that even though they're healthcare workers, they're still not immune from picking up these things on Facebook about microchips or about uh, fertility issues. That's one that I've heard a lot with younger, younger nurses or that this is not tested enough or that they've heard something from somebody that this, this certain side effect happened. It's all of that kind of, uh, all of this kind of mythology that's out there that they've, they've <clears throat> ingested. And, and you can kind of sit down with some of them and you can make, you can make efforts to try and meet them where they are. And I think that sometimes works, but, but sometimes yeah. they're beyond the, the, the reach and it's very, very, yeah. very difficult. We have this with the flu shot every year with, with nurses. At least I'm worried about the fertility issue. <laughs> Well, I will let you worry about that and not comment on it. Dr. Adalja, I do want to note that it's not just the healthcare workers. It's also the schools, the issue here of New York City saying that uh, school workers who have not gotten vaccinated are not allowed to come into the buildings after Friday. Have we moved beyond the carrot phase of vaccination? And is it only a stick approach as we try to push the reticent? I do think that the stick approach is something that's going to be more and more common amongst organizations trying to get their workforce vaccinated and make their workplace safer. And, and, and it does work. We've seen it with with seen it with flu vaccine. We've seen it in companies that have done this because people need to work. And I think that employers have the right to set the conditions for for uh, employment. And it's it's again something that just doesn't make sense why these people are shunning the vaccine. But I do, I do think that the higher the vaccination rate is, the much better we are going to be. If you go through a hospital, and I have to go work today at 11, 11 a.m. It's going to be unvaccinated COVID patients that I see. This is, as the president says, a pandemic of the unvaccinated. And these unvaccinated people are not just harming themselves. They're actually crushing their community hospitals. And I think that's important. It's not as if they get sick and they stay home. They actually show up for care and we have to take care of them. And that takes up a bed that takes up room that other people with heart attacks and strokes don't have anymore. And it, so, so I really think we have to show people exactly what damage they're doing by getting infected with COVID and then impinging on the healthcare system, which we all have to rely upon.